Blog Talk Radio. Live on the daddy's roof, you follow mama's rules. Gotta be a good little girl. Once you hit 18, the light turns green. Wanna get wild on the world. Her air friends are getting mad. Got their own party pad. Everybody's saying hell yeah. Come on, come on, it's on. It's off the chain, crazy insane. in the yard There's a whole nother bunch drinking moonshine punch They get a little louder by the jar We little innocent child Got them all going wild hey, You can hear them for a country mile Finally singing a wrong damn song And it's off the chain Crazy and strange You Billy Molly with the whole damn gang Slipping out on the news Cutting loose Raising all kinds of kind Brother, it's off the chain This is off of the Joe Friday responding to the 415 at 34 Brickyard Road. We've also got a 390 and a 314. We've seen parties before, but this ain't nothing like we've ever seen. It's off the chain, crazy and strange. You really party with the whole damn gang. Slipping out of the news, cutting loose, raising all kinds of kind. It's off the chain, crazy and strange. You really party with the whole damn gang. Slipping out of the news, cutting loose, raising all kinds of kind. off the chain. This is a special show for a very special woman that has been so patient with me. So after I had to cancel her show last week because my husband was so very ill, God love her. That was the second time we'd had to cancel the show and she's been so patient. So I said, you know what, we're going to do a Tuesday night show, but we'll get to her in a minute. I want to thank each and every one of you all for being here tonight and for spending this hour with me. As you all know, I say this at every show. It's not my show. I just facilitate it. This is your show. Because of all of y'all, we have reached just on this show by itself, ladies and gentlemen, 133,614 listeners. Just just the show. Now, when you add all the podcasts that this thing is on, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio, FM.com, Podcast.com, Podcast Garden, YouTube, iTunes, um, 
Where else? Spreaker, SoundCloud, and Reverb Nation. We're in over 200 countries and over 200,000 listeners, and we're only in our second year. And it's all because of each of you. You, the listener, and you, the guest, are the ones that have brought this show to the life of its own that it has, and I thank each and every one of you for it. Now, there are two ways to get on the show. One, you can come on as a guest, and we'll talk about anything. You have a book, you have a painting, you have sculpture, you have music, you have a political platform, you want to talk religion, or you just want to talk. I'll put you on the show. That's what this show is about. That's why we call it Off the Chain. Or, if you still aren't sure about coming on the show, but you still want to get your, your product out there, I can do that too. To for 30 days, no matter how many shows I have in that 30-day time period, I will run your ad. And if I have to reschedule a show, because as most of y'all know, my husband is very, very ill, and these past few weeks, it, I've almost lost him several times. But that being said, um, the ad will go with the next show. Uh, you will get your 30 days worth of ads. So contact me at off the chain radio at yahoo.com and I will tell you how to do it. And let's get you out there because this is a happening place. As Terry Wilson said, when I had her listed for this week on the show, she put it up on her page and she said, Yvonne throws the best parties. So, yeah, we do throw some good parties here. And with that being said, I want to welcome some sponsors to the show. We have a brand new sponsor. She just came on this month. It's uh, Jess with Audio Bookworm Promotions. And this is what she says. Looking for a listen? Adopt. Don't shop for your next audiobook favorite. The Adopt an Audiobook program has new releases and audiobooks of every genre. All audiobooks are free to interested reviewers. Now, that, that's the key sentence in this ad. All audiobooks are free to interested reviewers. You simply listen and share your thoughts. Audiobookwormpromotions.com, adopt an audiobook. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of suggest myself, ladies and gentlemen, and I have a new audiobook out from the Mad Hatter, and I think I'm going to add that to her list, so watch for that. Jay Traveler Pelton, an author who has been on this show, has just released two more books within a week. I, I, th- I don't think the woman ever sleeps. And Kai Dante's Strategium, people are so happy about the destruction of the anti-fertility virus that they want Kai to run for president. Kai Dante for president indeed. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Oberlins are back and are successful in diverting the virus that are destroying the fertility of the populace. But in return, sanctuary is attacked and the family members are scattered to fight radiation sickness alone. Given only a strange poem to use, will Kai and Micah figure out the puzzle before they all die? Who in the family will survive to destroy the tyrant running the brotherhood? And in the second book she released, Clan Falconer's War, a fantasy set in the future medieval times after the big war, Lucian thought that as the youngest son of the manor, his future would be as simple as land-owning farmer who raised good horses and went up to the manor to visit the family for holidays. After all, there were seven brothers older than he with much more entitlement to the inheritance. However, through a massacre and magic, his simple acceptance of a quiet life was going to come to a roaring end as he ends up leading the forces of his clan and the kingdom against an evil greater than any wizard had ever faced, an evil led by his own brothers. Well, he, his clan, and Falcon Crest survived the war. So that's Kai's Dante Strategium and Clan Falcon's War by J. Traveler Pelton. Check it out. Diane Moe. She is so funny. I just love her. And thank you, Australia, because y'all are our number one listening base here on the show. And y'all put her books on the map as number one in Australia. Diane Moe has a series called the Sam Holden series. And she is our favorite vigilante. And she is back. The third book in the series has been released. And Dog Bones 
Sam's quest to avenge abused animals is threatened when the FBI comes after her on one side and the commissioner wants her dead on the other side. Will her double life be exposed? Will Sam be able to protect the animals, her friends, and herself? Check out Dog Bones by Diane Moat everywhere ebooks are sold. And if you haven't started the series yet, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to begin with Dog Gone by Diane Moat for free on Amazon. I want to welcome my guest to the show tonight. And again, I am so appreciative of this woman. She She's amazing. She she suffered with me through these twice. I've had to reschedule her. One time Jack was in the hospital. The last time he was so sick, I thought I was losing him. But she has been so patient and so kind. Author and personal trainer, Amanda Sturzik. Is a certified, she's a certified personal trainer, a CSM certified personal trainer, certified eccentrics instructor, and creator of the Move More Institute, an initiative to promote healthy, active living by adding more movement, activity, and motion to your daily life. Her first book, Move More, Your Life Depends on It, Practical Tips to Add More Movement to Your Day, is available on Amazon. She has been teaching group fitness classes since 2010, and she has taught men, women, and children of all ages, as well as elite athletic, athletes. I can't talk tonight. She offers in-home and our in-office personal training, eccentrics group and private sessions, and movement coaching and workshops in central Ottawa, Canada, as well as online personal training via Skype or FaceTime. Amanda specializes in helping retired older adults and sedentary office workers maintain strength, flexibility, and mobility. Her slogan is Move More, Feel Better. Amanda holds a master's degree in social social psychology from Carleton University, and before her career in fitness, she worked for 10 years in health promotion research and human resources. Amanda, welcome and I, I forgot to tell you before we went live, when I told my husband I was doing the show tonight, he said, good, tell her thank you for her patience. Oh, it's no problem at all. I'm so happy to be here, Yvonne. Thank you for having me on. You are quite welcome. Now, before we talk about this, this, you and I are so in sync with this, but before we talk about it, let's take a step back in history. What in the world made you go in this direction? Because this is something that's fairly new within our society. People are, are beginning to change their way of thinking about movement and, and staying healthy. But it hadn't always been so. How did you get here? Was this something you always wanted to do? Well, so I so fitness is my third career post-kids. I got into the fitness industry and I just, I mean, as you said, in my bio, I worked in human resources. I worked in health promotion research. I, I, my background's in social psychology. So I've always been interested in people and helping people uh, live better lives, whether it's, you know, with their health or with in the workplace with HR and in the fitness realm. um, I'm, you know, I started in this, industry in my 40s post kids don't exactly have an Instagram bikini body (laughs) Um, (laughs) but I I found that uh, I like to work with people who just wanted to feel better right that you know I'm not the one who's training you to do a weightlifting competition or a bodybuilding competition Um, you know I prefer to work with people who maybe they're new to exercise or they've been injured and they haven't exercised in a while, or they've recently had a new medical diagnosis and they're not sure how and what they can do. And in working with people who've never been comfortable going to establish gyms, um, I've had a lot of great success with people saying, you made me feel more comfortable about exercising and seeing how enjoyable it can be. Um, and I just, you know, as I talk in social media, you know, with when you're selling your business and yourself online, you always have to kind of talk about, 
you know, what's your why? Why are you doing it? Why are you helping people? And what's unique about you? Why sh- why should they come to you? <laughs> and for me, I want people to understand that physical activity it doesn't need to be costly, complicated, or time-consuming. You know, you don't need uh, fancy workout clothes or specialized equipment or expensive gym memberships, right? You have everything you need in your own body. <laughs> You know, often when I'm on my own at home, I do my own workouts in my pajamas in my living room. I don't, you know, get all geared up and use fancy equipment. And and that the industry has made a fortune saying, in order to look better, feel better, you got to buy this. You got to belong to this gym, or you got to buy this piece of equipment, or you got to wear this. And Amanda, for centuries, since the beginning of time, people have been physically fit because they worked out every day of their lives by doing things like farming, picking up babies, mopping a floor, walking to the store, walking to school, which we don't do anymore, washing a dish, pulling a weed, those are are everyday exercises, and I think people were healthier for it. Absolutely. And actually, there's some researchers in the States who tracked um, the uh, an increase in, ob- in obesity that was correlated to increase in acquisition of labor-saving devices like uh, uh washing machines and dryers, you know, you're not hanging your clothing outside anymore, dishwashers, garage door openers. So, you know, it's kind of been this uh, slow increase uh, in the last century, and it's gotten a lot more predominant this century, Um, so much so that, you know, physical inactivity is creating a global health crisis. The World Health Organization lists physical inactivity as the fourth global risk factor for premature death in the category of non-communicable diseases. So you have number one is high blood pressure, number two, smoking, number three, high blood sugar, and number four, physical inactivity. And and it stands to reason that when we are saddened that everything in our body slows down, our brain slows down, our heart slows down, fat um, breakdown slows down and it the body goes screaming because it's saying wait this is not right so in order to get your attention I'm going to give you hypertension I'm going to give you high blood sugar I'm going to cause your pancreas not to work I'm going to do something to wake you up yeah I, so I'm nodding my head I realize you and your listeners can't see me <laughs> nodding my head as you're talking um, but, yeah, we're under moving. And think about what happens, you know, if you're under breathing or under eating. Um, it, your body can't sustain itself with this. And you're right. We get all these signals and warnings in our bodies. And this is, it's it, like I said, it's a global health care crisis. And um, it's our own doing. <laughs> and so, um, like I said before, you don't need fancy things you don't it doesn't need to be complicated it can just be a matter of you know you're sitting down stand up as soon as you stand up you get all the fluids uh, moving in your body and things start to work and you start to get oxygen going to all the cells in your body and blood's pumping away from your heart and back to your heart which is what it needs to do but if you're sitting all the time it tends to pool in your feet and ankles and you know, causes swollen feet, things, more serious conditions like deep vein thrombosis. They actually, uh, some researchers did a study and looked at uh, binge watching on TV, right? Everybody likes to sit and binge watch their favorite shows now that they can get them on demand. And they had the same risk factors for deep vein thrombosis as people on long haul international flights which is, you know, they for years said that international flights are a problem for Uh circulation and all these types of things. And we actually don't have to get strapped into an airplane anymore to get the same things happening in our bodies. 
Well, I get real tickled because I'm 4'11", and I might weigh, I might weigh 110, maybe. And and I have these people all the time tell me, Yvonne, you're going to have to help looking after your husband because my husband weighs over 200 pounds, and now he's dead weight. You can't handle him alone. Amanda, I've been dealing with this man for 13 years. I can move. I've picked him up out of the floor. Mm-hmm. And, and it's because I have handled him. And he trusts me to handle him. Yeah. And so when somebody says, well, I'm too old to walk or I'm too old to do this, I'm too old to do that, their mind is playing tricks on them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, think about it, right? We only get one body. You know, maybe we might have a few parts uh, swapped out with hip replacements and knee replacements, which in and of themselves are problematic. But you get this one body for your lifetime. It's designed to last a lifetime. So really what should be happening is your body should be fully functioning. You have a long life, and maybe the last three to six months of your life, things start to decline. And, you know, you had a great life and you die. But what's happening is because we're not using our bodies and we're sitting so much, things are declining, you know, like the warranties coming up on our bodies. And because we <laughs> haven't been using it optimally, it, it reminds me of, you know, whenever we get a new car, my husband drives it at different speeds, you know, for the first 200 kilometers, because that's what the manual says. Don't just put the gas down and always have it at the same speed. You need to vary it and alter it so you're not wearing it down, that everything's, you know, working, wearing down the way it should, not prematurely. And before the show, we were talking about um, everything is convenient now. You go through the drive through at Applebee's. You go through the drive through at McDonald's, at Burger King, at Wendy's. At you name it, you go through the drive through. I refuse to go through a drive-thru. I absolutely, to me, that is a height of laziness. It's you're too cotton-picking lazy to park the car, get out and go in, then your your mind has convinced you that it's a matter of convenience. Convenience causes more heart attacks, strokes, and death than anything else I know of. That's absolutely right. And And I have a little section in my book called Issue the Drive-Thru. Basically, don't do it. Go park the car. Go park the car at the far end of the lot and walk in. You know, use your body, use your muscles, and actually do what use them for what they were meant to do. So, um, I, I, can I actually give you a quick definition since we're talking Absolutely. about using our bodies? Yes, so, ma'am. Um, and this is this is used with permission. I reprinted it in my book with permission from the World Health Organization. So the World Health Organization defines physical activity as any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. So it doesn't say anything about gym membership, fancy equipment, special clothing. It just it just says it's you're using your body, you're using your muscles to expend energy. And that's kind of we've lost this what I call the the low, the light physical activity or what's on the low end of the continuum of physical activity, we've kind of taken all these small little movements out of our daily lives with all our convenience, um, and that's why we're having these problems with our bodies. And, what, and, and something just struck me as you were talking about um, the conveniences. One of the things that has become a convenience that has also become a thorn in our side is the remote control. When I was growing up, if you wanted to to change the channel, you got up, you walked over to the television and you actually changed the channel that, and then you walked back to your, the place you were sitting, that small movement made your body say, Oh, I'm still here. Yep, absolutely. And it's all these little convenience factors. So one thing I have in my, um, because it happens with office workers, but it also happens with uh, retirees. Older adults are actually the fastest, the 65 plus or fastest growing demographic on Facebook. And they're sitting hunched in their, you know, Barker lounger with their iPad or iPhone doing their status updates. 
so, you know, everything convenient and close by. So what I talk to people about is do a review of your, your setup. You know, we all have to work at desks at some point, but it shouldn't be so convenient, everything within easy reach that you're never having to move to get anything. Would it be fair to say, Amanda, that we we trick ourselves into believing that all of these conveniences are good for us? Well, it's, um, yeah, absolutely, because we're trying to cram more into the day. And mm-hmm. and this is a problem, right, with uh, just looking at having too much on our plates. Um, there's an, another Canadian author, Carl Honoré, who wrote a great book called In Praise of Slow, and it's all about trying to slow things down and not being so rush rush and not trying to jam-pack your day with everything. Um, you know, convenience. Like, sure, sure, there's some times, right? The other night we ordered on Uber Eats because we'd just gotten home from a trip and we were all exhausted and we were unpacking and nobody wanted to cook and nobody wanted to go to the grocery store. But we don't do it every night. We did it once in the entire year. Um, And that's the problem, right? These conveniences become habit and then we think this is the only way. So we need to sort of start nudging ourselves she makes life a little bit less convenient so that it forces us to get up and move. And it also, when we are forced to get up and move, let's say, for instance, that we have a problem rolling around in our head that, that we see absolutely no solution for it. Just it's bouncing off our, uh, the, the brain cells are bouncing off our skull like a pinball machine and, and we're going around in circles and, and the more we go around in the circles, the more frustrated we get, the more frustrated we get, the more our body tenses up, the more our heart works harder, the more our pulse races, the more the blood pressure goes up. If we get up and walk around and just let it go, the answer always comes. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. And it's also the oxygen isn't getting to your brain. Um, because you're hunched over, because you're not moving. And it doesn't, you know, you can go out for a walk and get some fresh air and help. But even, you know, if it's the middle of a storm in the winter, you might not want to. So you just get up and sometimes I'll just tell people, find some space to pace in your office and just walk back and forth and, you know, just get stuff moving. And and then it kind kind of helps you refocus in a way because you've thought about something else. And you've given yeah. your brain a break, and you've refreshed your body in the in the process. And and all of the internal organs go, oh, okay, now I can go back to being normal again because I finally got that idiot's attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Off the Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, with my guest, Amanda Thurzik, and she is an author and a personal trainer, and we're talking about taking care of your body and that you don't have to join a gym, buy expensive equipment you'll never use, buy clothes that you'll never wear, and we have some other great things to talk about, but we're going to take a real quick break, and we will be right back. Horses see ghosts. A new poetry book by Gannat Wise. It's been called Poetry for the Rest of Us. Amazon. Do you have cougars on your porch swing? (coughs) Are horses your new best friend? (coughs) Do your nicest shoes get buried knee deep in snow as your toes turn blue? Are you bothered by wolves at your woodpile? No, not that kind of wolf. Join wildlife artist and author Nancy Quinn and her family as they discover an exciting new life in Go West, Young Woman, a true Montana adventure. Available online and in bookstores. Or visit quinnwildlifeart.com for a personalized signed copy. Critics agree, it's a hoot. A struggling city. Its beloved baseball team an antique camera, and photos from that camera that bear an image from the pit of hell, an entity only a select few can see. 
Journalism professor Buddy Cullen is determined to track this demon down. But who is the hunter and who is the prey? And who will be the next target of mankind's mortal foe? Mortal Foe. Available at Amazon.com. The year, 1888. The place, London's East End. Dead and mutilated bodies are popping up all over, from Stamford to Whitechapel. Jack the Ripper is leaving his mark, and the city's on edge. Yvonne Mason is back with a tale of murder and millinery. The Rhodes Hat Factory is booming while the body count rises. Why now? How are these hats connected? Has the Hatter gone mad? Mad Hatter from Yvonne Mason. Available now on Amazon.com. And we are back. This is Off the Chain. I'm your host, Yvonne Mason, with my guest, author and personal uh, trainer, Amanda Sturzik. And Amanda, I was looking at my notes, and for years and years and years and years, there, there was a mantra that was out there about... In corporate America, we have more burnout than anything. Explain to the audience what burnout is. And it doesn't even have to be in a job. It can be in your personal life as well. Yeah. So so burnout is basically when you just, you're physically exhausted and you can't function anymore. And sadly, the burnout in corporate America and, you know, lots of industrialized countries in their corp- corporate worlds um, became a thing because of people working so many hours, you know, all these knowledge workers in offices who I like to say became professional sitters <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, you have to sit at your desk and you have to get things done and you sit in meetings and you, you know, often sit for hours in traffic and rush hour going home and then, sit and do more work at home when you get there um and i more and more companies are kind of coming around to the idea that they need to look at the wellness of their employees um in their day-to-day lives and you know not be so restrictive about um requiring people to be sitting all the time, right? Giving people healthy breaks at work and encouraging it and modeling it so that people realize it's okay. You don't have to be chained to your desk for eight to 10 hours a day. And it's burnout is not, it's, it's not physically healthy. It's not mentally healthy. It's not emotionally healthy. No, no, absolutely not. And and like you said, it happens, you know, when it happens in your professional life, it hits your personal life too, right? They're connected. You can't just shut it off. It kind of it takes over your entire world. And before you know it, if you've either had a nervous breakdown, a heart attack, a stroke, or you wake up dead one morning and people are going, but it was so healthy. What happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. And, you know, it's, so I have... um. I have an acronym that I created uh, for office workers to um, get them to get up and move more. It's called a smoke break and smoke stands for sedentary and movement optional kills early. And I thought of it because I was thinking about, I was downtown here in Ottawa and I was seeing all these smokers, right? Indoor, no smoking laws require them to leave their desks leave the building and they often have to go outside and walk around because they can't be in, you know, six to eight feet of the entrance to a building. So while they're destroying their lungs, (laughs) they're actually (laughs) more physically fit than their non-smoking colleagues because two to three times a day, it's socially acceptable for them to get up and walk away and take a smoke break. It's not, it's not as socially acceptable yet for you to get up and take a walk. So I tell workers, just tell your boss you're going for a smoke break. There you go. But it should be socially acceptable to get up and and walk out the door, maybe walk around the building and come back because you become more productive. The brain is refreshed. Like I said, the oxygen is flowing again, the, the, the heart's beating, the the mental and, and physical tiredness is gone 
and you can become more productive in your day. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and this is where I see like efficiency in offices. Like I'm kind of an efficiency expert's worst nightmare (laughs) because I don't (laughs) want their desk space to be efficient. I don't want people to send their print jobs to the closest printer. I, you know, I want, the IT department to set it up so that people's print jobs go to the farthest printer down the hall. So, you know, they're not just printing something and reaching across their desk or going outside their office door and grabbing it, that they're actually walking down the hall to get it. I want them to go, you know, if they're in a building with multiple stories, go down one set of stairs, not the elevator on the stairs to go to the washroom. That makes perfect sense to me. And and elevators are another convenience that has helped destroy us physically and mentally. When when you have a choice between an elevator and a stair, if you are physically able, take the stairs. You feel so yeah. much better when you get to the top. Absolutely. Well, and the problem too is that not when you walk into a building you can see the elevator right away from the entrance. It's often hard to find the stairs um, because I try to find the stairs whenever possible. And if people aren't inclined to want to walk, if it's not convenient for them to go up the stairs, then they're just going to walk right in and push the button and stand there and wait for the elevator. But, you know, our... I've been caught in too many elevators that stop between doors in my lifetime. I, I have a thing against elevators. Oh, man. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be taking them either if I was caught in them. Um, no, what I was going to say is our local children's hospital has these great animal footprints on the wall that, that guide you to different departments. So when you go in, if you want to go to radiology or you want to go to the lab or whatever, They'll say, follow, you know, the duck footprints or follow these footprints. And I, I think, you know, it would be great if buildings had, they don't even have to be animal footprints. They can be people fo- people prints. <laughs> um, but sh- walking to the, ele- to the stairs, you know, so it's not, so that people know, oh, if I want to walk, I can go over here and there's the stairwell. And it's kind of a cute, fun little nudge that'll help people, uh-huh. you know, want to take them. And and it's also a source of conversation because it's a it's an oddity. You don't see it. But as more and more people do it, they would take the stairs as a habit. We have become creatures of habit. We are creatures of yes. habit. It becomes a yeah. habit to punch that elevator button. It becomes a habit to reach across and pick that piece of paper up off the printer. It becomes a habit to bring our meal to our desk and eat at our desk without getting up going to the break room or going out to the park, eating our meal, and then walking around for a bit and then coming back to our desk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and habit is a great word because um, 40% of our behaviors are habits. And habit basically implies that we do it without thinking, right? It's just so ingrained that we're not consciously do. So, you know, almost one half of your daily life is just, you're kind of not really paying attention to what you're doing. You're just going through the motions. Um, And this is where I give a lot of recommendations in my book for nudges. So um, I don't know if you know the name Richard Thaler, but he's an American economist in Chicago. And in 2017, he won the Nobel Prize in economics for his nudge theory. So the whole idea with nudges is to try and change people's behavior um, and nudges need to be things that are easy to implement and low cost or free. So, you know, nudging people to use the stairs by putting footprints on the floor or in, uh, in London, in the subway system, you see every once in a while videos on social media where they've painted cool motifs down the stairwells and then people want to walk up and down them because they're fun. Uh-huh. And it just it's nudged them to be more physically active, and they don't even realize they've done it, but all of a sudden they feel better. And they're, they're up the stairs or down the stairs, and they, they're going, I just did this. Yeah. Didn't even realize I did this. 
you also have another acronym called NEAT. Tell the folks Neat. about this. I, I found this very interesting. So NEAT is, um, uh, was uh, con- conceived by uh, Dr. James Levine, who's uh, an endocrinologist with the Mayo Clinic. And NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. So this is the way our body expends energy that is not eating, sleeping, or a dedicated, you know, one-hour workout at the gym. So it's all these small little movements like standing up to walk over to change the channel or washing your clothes by hand, hanging them up on a uh, drying rack instead of, you know, using a uh, dryer, washing dishes by hand, preparing food yourself instead of just sitting there and going into the app to get your food delivered to your door. So it's all these small little movements in our daily lives. That's what we've lost with our sedentary lifestyle, and that's what we need to try to get back. So when I was talking before about physical activity lying on a continuum, it's these, you know, little movements that we need that you can accumulate over the course of the day. You don't have to be going all out for two hours straight trying to, you know, train for a marathon. You can just get up and move more. Or or they could become a 24-7 caregiver, and I guarantee you they would move a lot more. Absolutely. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, and if you look at um, professions uh, like nursing, right, nurses don't have the same issues that people who work in offices do. That's true, because they never they never stop. They're going from room to room to room to room. They're all the time on the floor. And when my husband was in the hospital, they were everywhere, even though they and and even though they carry their little micro, you know, laptops pushing them around they were still moving and all of their patients were not in the straight line our nurse might have four patients on on the wing we were on and then have four more patients on another wing and then four more patients so there's four wings and she would have patients all over the floor and those were big floors so she's moving Mm -hmm. all the time right yeah and she's not sweating And she's not wearing fancy workout clothing. You know, I think about my grandmother when I was a kid who had, you know, she vacuumed the house every single day. And that vacuum cleaner was a beast. (laughs) She didn't own running shoes. I don't even think I ever saw her in slacks. She was always in a dress or a skirt, Um, you know, and she was strong until, you know, the last three months of her life when she kind of declined and died and, You know, I remember being in her kitchen with her, and she didn't have an electric mixer, so she's beating by hand, and I'm looking at those muscles in her arm going, oh, my (laughs) gosh. (laughs) Every cake that my my grandmother made, well, both of my grandmothers, every cake they made was made from scratch, and they made it by hand. Yeah, wow. And, And washed all the dishes by hand, too, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I still do. Because I hate a dishwasher. My thought process is this. To me, it's not a convenience. It's an aggravation. Because I still have to load that damn thing. I still have to unload it and put the dishes up. I can wash my dishes. I can put them in the dish drain, let them drain for a little while. Then I can put them away. I don't have to load and unload a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And run run up my light bill. And and what what we think is a convenience is not always a convenience because in the end it's going to cost us something. Well, yeah, it's short term gain, long term pain, and that's and it, that's the problem that people don't realize. And my my um uh, my garage door is an electric garage door, but my car's parked outside of the garage, so I still have to go outside. I have to walk outside of the garage to get in the car, which I have to step up on because it's a suburban, and I have to pull myself up because I'm so short, get in the car to go anywhere. Because to me, it's foolish to only take two steps and be in my car. Those extra yeah. 10 steps are worth it. Well, they do. And there's a, there was a study in the uh, Journal of the American Heart Association. They reported on a study that talked about um, – you know, physical activity accumulated in these sporadic bouts throughout the day still help to reduce early death. 
So it's not, you know, just because you can't dedicate an hour to go running or do an exercise class, just doing these small little bouts throughout the day is, is what's key to, you know, keeping your body moving all day, every day. Now I know why all the women for centuries and my family on both sides live to be ripe old ages. They were always moving. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and think about when, you know, post-World War II, uh, when all the men were working in offices and smoking (laughs) too, uh, and they were having, you know, they were dying a lot younger than their wives. That was why. They were not only yeah. sedentary, they were killing their lungs and the rest of their body. Now, in in my deep dive of you, I found out something that I found very interesting. And okay. you have a section called Being Coachable. Explain to the folks what that means, because not everyone is coachable. So every once in a while, because uh, I teach a group fitness class called Eccentrics, and I do personal training, Um and every once in a while, I'll have someone who will come through class or will hire me to come into their home or office, and I end up firing them. <laughs> or they just drift or they drift off on their own because they're not coachable, right? They want to come and do the workout, but they don't want to actually listen to me, the instructor or trainer. <laughs> Um, and they think they 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 can do it better or no more. And I'm thinking, why are you here? Because <laughs> everybody exactly. else wants to hear what I have to say. And um, so, you know, every once in a while, I'll have someone who's not coachable because they just, you know, I. So here's a perfect. Ex- I'll give you a perfect example. And this was kind of one of my ahas when I realized I wanted to write this book. Uh, this is a tale of two personal training clients. So and these two people, a man and a woman, I was training at about the same time. And um, the man was doing great, but he decided he just, um, you know, for in, he was driving far to meet me and the cost of hiring a personal trainer, it's, it's not cheap. So he decided instead he was going to join a gym closer to his house and go work out there. And, and, and I get that, right. You know, it's not, everybody not everybody can afford a personal trainer for long periods of time so he um so I had spent time with him helping him work on different programs giving him homework giving him guidance on what he needed to do on his own when he was doing his own workouts you know like focus on what you're doing don't rush the movement get yourself set up properly you know, remember, like, get positive. You're getting stronger each time you lift that weight. So, you know, don't worry about, oh, I'm not lifting enough. Just, just do, just enjoy it and focus on the process. So he went off and started training on his own, and you know, in his own neighborhood. And then I had this woman at the same time who was coming to me who was a longtime client. Um, and she would do fine in the training sessions and I give her homework to do. So it's like, do these exercises, do that, blah, blah, blah. And she never did them. You know, she's like, ah, I could, I was too tired or, Oh, it was too hard. Or oh, I was busy watching TV. And so she wasn't really getting a lot of gains in her progress of what her life goals were for personal training. Um, but that man who had been with me for a few months and then left About seven months later, I got an email from him, and he said, you know, I just wanted to check in and tell you that uh, I'm doing great. I've lost 100 pounds, and I want to thank you. It was you helping me get on the right track and get focused, and life is so much better now, and it's all thanks to you. And to me, I thought, okay, yeah, I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to help people get their life on track by, you know, they come to me for one hour a week that's less than 1% of their waking hours for that week. So if I only have them for that one hour a week and I can't influence them beyond that, then, you know, I, I, I can't help them. And I, so this is where I came up with the idea for my book is I want to have people to have something that says, you can do this. You, you know, you have it within you and I have trust. I have faith that you can do it. And, 
just get up and move more, right? So you, you know, you hire me to do a couple training sessions. I get you comfortable working out, thinking about form, blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I don't get sad when people go, okay, I'm good. I'm going to do it on my own now. I'm like, great. That's what I want. I want to work myself out of a job by getting people to be more independent with their physical activity. And, and Linda, would it also be fair to say that as a society, we have lost the art of self-discipline? And in order to do, in order for them to get out of their own way and to become healthier, they have to learn a form of self-discipline. Just like you said, the, the, the woman wouldn't do the homework. She didn't have time for it because she was watching television. One has to train oneself, which is an exercise, which is part of this well-being of self-discipline. Yeah, well, you're right, but the other thing, actually, it's funny, because I was just rereading uh, today one of the studies that I referenced in my book to work on my blog post for this month, um, and, it, you know, it struck me again that there, this is three different studies I've read where they talk about um, willpower being a finite resource, so basically at the end of the day, if you've been fighting not eating that chocolate bar all day long and trying to, you know, kick in the willpower to not yell at your kids when they're driving your bananas or (laughs) scream at the person who cuts you off in traffic and you get to the end of the day, you don't have any willpower left. It's something that kind of has to reset every morning. And this is why a lot of fitness professionals encourage people to, um, exercise in the morning or to at least, you know, put those nudges there for them to want to exercise, right? Like put your shoes beside your bedside table. So you go, oh yeah, I did want to go for a walk today. Or, you know, just like help you with willpower by making it easier to make these choices. Like a perfect example of a nudge, a healthy nudge is you leave fresh fruit on the counter in your line of sight and you put the cookies in the cupboard behind a closed door. So then you're, you see the fruit, you're more likely to reach for it because it's right there. So it's kind of nudging you to eat healthy. Cause it's convenient. You don't have to go yeah. open the door of the, of the cabinet of the cupboard and look for it and pull it out and open it and close it and put it all back in the cupboard. The fruit's right there. And that's right. You just pick it up and go. And if you do that enough times, then it becomes a habit. Oh, I'm hungry. I want a snack. I pick up pick up a piece of fruit instead of a cookie. And see, ladies and gentlemen, you learn so much on this show, and it's all simple things. It's it's not expensive. It's not mind boggling. It's not all consuming. Would it be fair, Amanda, to say that it is a healthier lifestyle that we have to make up our minds, A, we want to do, and B, we have to make it a part of our daily routine. Absolutely. And that's the key, right? I mean, people just have to start being more focused on, you know, not just relaxing and binge watching and reaching for their phones and doing everything, you know, get off the websites looking for online, get off online shopping, (laughs) just get up and go to the store and window shop, right? Walk down the aisle and look in the stores. And I'll, I'll tell you a story. So my daughter has um, type one diabetes. So she wears an insulin pump. Her, her body doesn't produce insulin. She was diagnosed at eight. And when physical activity with people with type one diabetes they burn through carbohydrates faster when they're physically active. So you have to like start doing this managing, like give them less insulin, give them more carbs so that they don't, you know, go low and pass out. So our daughter, she's a teenager now, but even when she was nine, 10, 11, she loved to shop. She loved, she called it window buying. She'd go window shopping (laughs) and she'd go to the mall with my husband and she'd come back and she would always go low. And we realized like it's 
physical activity for her to go window shopping because mm-hmm. a she's she's really active because she's excited going from store to store and also it's her brain is burning calories and carbohydrates because she's thinking about all the clothes she yes. wants to buy and, and, and that like, you know. That is very that's a that's that's a very wise statement because people don't understand that your brain needs the the calories and the carbs to function as well as the oxygen. Absolutely, yeah. It's a muscle for crying out loud. Yeah, it is, and it it burns through a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, you're not going to believe this, Amanda, but our hour's almost up. Oh dear, it's been such a great time talking to you, Yvonne. Well, thank you. Would you come back? I'd love to. Great. We'll have you back after the first of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, she's amazing. So before we completely run out of time, tell the folks where you can be found and where your book can be found. Yeah. So my book is on, and I mean, I kind of chuckled when I was saying don't do online shopping, but (laughs) um, I self-publish and Amazon is the best space for self-publishing authors. And because I'm in Canada, right, it's hard to get a book out to the uh, global audience. So anywhere, any country in which you have Amazon, you can go online and search Move More. Your life depends on it. And you can order ebook or paperback version of the book. And then my website is my name, amandasterzik.com. And I'm just working on, I do a monthly blog on my website And my title of my blog that I'm hopefully going to get out tomorrow, I didn't, I couldn't sit still long enough to write it today. I had to go for two walks, (laughs) Uh, but it's, uh, I am actually writing, um, it's called the greatest basketball player that the NBA never knew. It's about my son and his love of basketball. And how I think he's just amazing how he's, he does it because he loves it, like Michael Jordan, right? He does it for the right. love of the game, and he's physically active, and he's, I, he's 17, so I see him going into adulthood having great habits around physical activity um, because he just he just loves playing basketball so much. Wow. So when – when we go off the air, don't hang up, but I do want to okay. say thank you so much for your patience and and for sticking with me and for coming and for your understanding about my husband. And you're marvelous. Thank you so, so oh, much. Now, you. ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, you all know that at the end of the show, I say a couple of things, and they're very important things. And one is we're all on a journey. And when you're out and about, understand that your worst day may be somebody else's best day. So think about that. And think about that when you're out there and someone you think may be not very friendly or is giving you a hard time, that you need to be kind to them. Because, A, you might save their life. And, B, you don't know what journey they're on. So be kind smile tell them they they have a a nice smile or they look nice or or they have beautiful eyes tell them something nice because they will forget what you look like they will forget what you're wearing but they will never ever ever forget how you've made them feel second if you want to achieve greatness ladies and gentlemen stop asking permission because you're all great we are all great. We're all unique, and we all have a purpose. So don't ask, go out and ask permission. Teach your children how to be great without asking permission because they are our future. And when we lose one child, we tear a, a hole in the fabric of our future. We can never get back, nor can we repair it. Because once that child is gone, Their ability, their craft, their purpose in life is gone with them. So with that being said, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Amanda, thank you so, so much for being with us and for being so patient and kind. We will be back tomorrow night, Thursday night. I will be off on Friday night. We will be back on Saturday night. So tomorrow night, Thursday night, and Saturday night. And 
who knows what's going to happen here on Off the Chain. Y'all all know that's why we call it Off the Chain, because everything happens, conversations go awry. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank Amanda for joining us. Join us again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Terry Wilson will be with me. She's the one that says I throw the best parties. So join us again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time when we will definitely be off the chain. Until then, this is your host, Yvonne Mason, with my guest and author, Amanda Serzik, and we wish you all a good evening. We are off the air, Amanda, but the, the what we're talking about will show up in the archive part of the show. But what I wanted to tell you is when we get off from here, and the show archives, I'll put it up on my, I'll put the link on my page, and I'm going to tag okay. you in it. Take Great. this show Thank and you. put it everywhere. And tomorrow, when I put it up on all the podcasts, I'll also put those links up um, okay. on the Facebook Great. page and tag you. So you're going to have all kinds of, of places where the show is going to be that you can promote yourself. Awesome. Thank you. You're an awesome <laughs> interview. I really enjoyed talking with you. Well, I enjoyed talking with you. You made my night in in. I can't wait to bring you back next year so that we can revisit this because this is another one of those things that people, if they're educated and if they know what, if they learn what they don't know and apply it, they're going to be healthier, happier, and more productive. Yeah. And that's my goal. I mean, that's where I found I wanted to write this book. I'm, I thought I just, I want to help people realize it, it's not complicated and they have the power to do this. And I thought this was the best way to reach as many people as possible. Absolutely. And if you were closer, I would hire you as my personal trainer. If it was just for five minutes a day. (laughs) So thank you for spending an hour with me. Thank your family for giving up that hour because it's an hour they'll never get back. And I appreciate them too for, for making that sacrifice. So please let them know. I will. Thank you. And I will send you some dates for next year, and let's do this again. Great. All right. Thank thank you, darling. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.